Welcome to the Leadership Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jono White. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Clarity. We are an Australian-based consultancy that works with leaders around the world, and our passion is to invest in people to become everything they're meant to be in order to fill the world with healthy organizations that people love to work for and customers line up to buy from. The goal of this podcast is to invest in you and your leadership. If you're just joining us for the first time, then feel free to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there. The most popular being our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from around the world in all different sectors give their in-depth answers on leadership, what books they love, what they found most challenging, uh, the most meaningful stories, how they how they structure their time through the day. That's free, so go and check it out. And we'd love to interview you about your leadership. I believe you have advice from your experience, your context, and your life so far that is important and can help other leaders. It's also a great way to give back. It's free to get involved, and you can do so by going to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest, or just Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form that pops up. We have a free resource for you on our website. It's called Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook. It has interviews with 10 world class leaders, and you can go to consultclarity.org. It's right at the top and get that today. Uh, we also have a daily email that we send out to over 15,000 leaders, and that email contains the highlights, our best content from our podcasts, our blog, uh, my book, uh, the books that we're loving that are out there about leadership. It's also the best way to get access to our masterclasses and workshops before anyone else. And there's also exclusive and limited uh, special options just for subscribers. And you can subscribe by going to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe. Now my gift to you is to work incredibly hard to provide the best leadership content I can to invest in you and your leadership. So if you're finding our content helpful, if you find this podcast helpful, then your gift to me uh, could be this. If you, if you do find it helpful, then write a review or rate our content and make sure you subscribe or follow. I can't emphasize enough how helpful that is. It really does help us to get the word out there so we can invest in more leaders to become everything they're meant to be. It also means a lot to me personally when people like you and people in our community share our content on social media. So if you do that, then please do look for me, Jono White, to tag me and look to tag Clarity uh, on whatever platform you're on. And our team, including me, I'm always looking to see when people have mentioned us so that I can engage with you. And also we look at sharing content. So if you if you write something about something we've done, there's also a good chance we'll share that with our followers. So if you could do that, that is a massive, massive help as we try to invest in as many leaders as we can around the world. Last of all, you can check out my book about how to deal with difficult people even if you hate conflict. It's called Step Up or Step Out. It's available on Amazon. You can just look up Step Up or Step Out John O'White or you can go to store.consultclarity.org forward slash book and check it out there. I have coached leader after leader after leader and in more than 50% of the sessions, this topic comes up. How do I deal with this person? I'm finding it really difficult and, and I just want to find a way that doesn't blow up to do a really, just to have a difficult conversation, to lead them better, how do I do that? There's a three-step process that I outline in this book that I believe can help you. Okay, let's get into today's episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast, enjoy. Welcome to episode 34 of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Today's guest is John Moody. John is the CEO of Pacific Joint Space Facility. Welcome, John. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's fantastic to have you on the podcast. Firstly, give us a little bit of insight into what you do as CEO and to, I guess, for listeners, what the Pacific Joint Space Facility is. Sure. Well, what I do, I'm the CEO of a company called Pacific Joint Space Facility. What that is, is a heavy launch 
a space launch facility uh, that, that encompasses that's not small sat based, it's, it's large satellite based, and we're looking at astronauts as well. So we're looking at the the kind of the, I guess the SpaceX setup. Yep. Uh, what I do is I have a board of directors, uh, which are mainly US based. And then I have a, a support team in Australia. Uh, most of my people, we we have a we have a bit of a policy that um, we're more friends than than workers. Um, so that when we talk, we talk to each other. We talk to each other on a friendly basis, on a, on more so than a business basis, um, because I found that uh, a lot of times. Times in the past, when you approach things in a business mind, it creates a bit of a barrier sometimes between communication with people. Uh, my and that facility is um, probably the only facility of its type in the South in, in the uh, Asia Pacific region. Um, and most of my people there, they come from military backgrounds, so they 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 checked out very well. They they're well educated. Some of my professors as well. Um, so one one guy's a marine, uh, and which is really good. And so we get a, we get, we get a mixed perspective of information, and uh, which is good. So it's not just one funnel of information that that I receive from my employees. Uh, we get, so we get a mixed variety of, of suggestions and, and ideas. Uh, again, we're all on a friendship basis. Uh, so I don't really see myself as the I am the CEO of the organisation. I'm responsible for the organisation, but I don't uh, approach my work environment like that. I more approach it more uh, as a friendship-based uh, trust mm. uh, sort of attitude. Um, my my uh, my my background is quite the opposite from space. I only really got into this industry about twelve years ago. Um, oh wow! Before that, I was I was in the music industry and I was in the Navy. Um, but this all stems back to when I was five and uh, my father used to take me out in the backyard and, and uh, show me the stars and point out the constellations to me and all that. And I became very interested in that. And I became very interested in uh, unexplained phenomena and uh, UFOs and and all, all these sort of things. Things are mystery. and. Um, so I got really in, entrenched in this. Um, uh, I joined the Naval Reserve Cadets when I was like 14. And then I went from that and went straight into the Navy as a Chief Petty Officer in Communications, uh, which I had a great time. Uh, but I came to a time when I felt that I needed to leave that. I actually left that and I went into the music industry. So uh, a total turnaround. Uh, I spent probably 20 years in that industry. I had a number one number one uh, single. Uh, I did very well in the industry. Wow. I went on and uh, MTV and all those sort of, pretty much everything you could do, uh, toured the country. And uh, well, I was getting a bit, bit old for that. <laughs> you starting to feel like to tell you the truth. And um, I went, my father had uh, had cancer and, uh, and uh, I was left basically, I went home and, and looked after him for two years while he was going through this terminal cancer, where it was. And uh, it came to a point where I had to put him into a home. So we did that. And uh, he died about you know, a short period after that. And uh, I got an inheritance, basically. And uh, I came to a point in my life where I asked the question, what was I doing with my life? Um, you know, I was this and I was that and I was this and I was that. And I, I came back to the original idea as a five-year-old kid when I was in grade one, when the teacher asked me, oh, John, what do you want to be in your life? And uh, I said, I wanted to be an astronaut. And uh, she had these group of cards that she, she had like a policeman, uh, a baker, you know, a <laughs> pilot, that sort of thing. She couldn't find an astronaut card. So she gave me a pilot card. And I said, no, that's not what I want to be. I want to be an astronaut. So I realised then that at that time back then, uh, there was no way for a boy from Rockhampton to sort of follow that career path. That just just wasn't really a, a, real, a reality, really. But uh, stepping ahead back to the, the current point of time when I said I was I had that epiphany, I found myself resorting back to that and thinking, you know, gee, I really want to start being involved in the space industry. So I, 
had a look at Virgin Galactic and what they were doing. And uh, I thought, well, okay, I'll, I might buy a seat on one of those Virgin Galactic flights. And then I started thinking a bit more. And I thought, hang on, why not own a company that does that? And so oh, I how? started, oh, yeah, I, I got on a, basically just got on a plane and went to the United States and I met pretty much everybody I could meet in the, in the space industry, uh, from NASA to you know, uh, to prob ULA, to private organization, to Virgin Galactic. And uh, I found those people very receptive to me, uh, which was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting a little bit of pushback, but uh, everyone was really cool. And uh, I thought, well, okay, this, 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 is, this just seems to be a bit of a goer. Um, I, I came back to Australia and I set up a company called Moody Space Center. Actually, it was originally Spaceport Australia. Uh, we have some problems with the name, so we changed it to Moody Space Center. I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, I might as well put, put my name on it. And um, we worked our way through the system. Uh, well, I worked my way through the system. I met employees. They, they came, they went. Um, and that went on for probably about four years, I'd say. And we went through all the government process, uh, compliance. But back, back then, we didn't have a space agency. Uh, it was the Department of Innovation and Science that was doing most of the work. A gentleman by the name of Mark Todd, uh, who was helping me in a setup, because because at that time, no one even knew in Australia how to go about doing this, uh, and so we were sort of breaking breaking ground as we as we were going forward, and probably the, the which started the Australian Space Agency really, uh, and I got to a point where. I wasn't getting anywhere with it because there was just uh, the regulation wasn't there, and uh, I realised I was I was probably a couple of years uh, too early for things. So I um, had had a bit of a holiday for a little bit, and, and uh, thought about things, and uh, and I thought about my business model and and what we we wanted to do, and I looked at that, and I had had a look at the future of, of space travel and what was coming up and what were people doing in the industry. And a lot of people were looking at uh, lunar setups and lunar mining and, and all that sort of thing and, and space and private space stations. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably a little bit out of touch here. So I, uh, I canned that business at Midi Space Centre and I, I took up Pacific Joint Space Facility. I got a whole heap of new directors on board uh, from the States, which gave me a lot of credibility in the United States. Uh, we set up relationships with uh, Space Force uh, and NASA, et cetera. And that happened very quickly. Uh, and we changed the business model structure to basically launching heavy lift launches, which is your fully crewed rocket. Uh, so we could deliver astronauts to the National Space Station, which were NASA were offering contracts for that. And uh, so we thought, that's really, that's a, a lot of money and that's a very interesting prospect and then we found out about people who, like Robert Bigelow who was setting up private space stations and we thought well we can service that too and so and then we found there was a whole heap of group of people looking at doing that so we got involved with those people and then we got involved with people who were looking at doing lunar activities uh, and there are some big names in that that, that I can't mention because of NDAs but there are some big mining companies actually interested in that and doing that. So we changed the business model to be um, heavy lift launch services for Earth orbit and lunar activities. And that just struck a chord with people. And things just seemed to take off. We, we were taken very seriously. Um, mm -hmm. People were interested. People wanted to get on board. And having the United States guys on board, um, you know, I hate to say it, but... The US pretty much runs a show, yeah. Uh, and if, if you're not in that, if you're not in that scene, you don't get very far. So that helped me in a tremendous lot. And uh, you know, one of the, one of the guys is a professor and a military intelligence officer, ex-military intelligence officer. So he's got the he's got the cues, he's got he's got the brains, and they're all friendly guys. And uh, <laughs> here we are today. That is an incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's uh, your life is just, and, and I thank you for giving us a bit of a snapshot is really fascinating, John. And it's wonderful to have you on here. I'm interested to know, have there been any moments since you launched, uh, you know, the Pacific joint venture, you know, since 
I guess since that side of, of your life, are there any moments that really come to mind? You mentioned you've been taken really seriously. You went and got the board of directors in the U S you've summed up a bunch of things that I imagine were quite, <laughs> you know, there would have been a lot of moments along the way. Any, anything that comes to mind along this journey that's really helped was a bit of a tipping point or really shaped you being able I, 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 and the company to be able to get here? Yeah, sure. I think the business model, um, mm. getting that business model right for the industry and not just seeing one or two years ahead, but seeing 10 or 20 years ahead. Um, that I think that's what really cracked it for us because I noticed that's when we started to drag a lot more people in and a lot more people contacting us, which yes. didn't happen that much in the past. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so we felt we felt we hit a chord with 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 the structure with the model of the business, uh, catering to those future services. Because you know when you when you're doing space, you have an idea, and that idea may take five to ten years to to fruition. Mm. So if you're looking at a company that's looking two to two to five years ahead, well, you're kind of not in the game, and. Uh, and, and that's what I, I put it. I put it down to uh, the model of the business changing and, and just homing in on those services. How did you? What was involved in changing the business model? I'm interested in the process you went through. You to know make what? That change. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. To tell you the truth, was letting my mind loose. Um, mm. I had all these ideas before, but I just wasn't sure if I was being. If people would take me as a fanatic or, or someone living in fantasy land. Yes. Um, and something happened to me. I don't know what sure. I woke up one day and I just look, you know what? I'm just going to put my ideas out there. And <laughs> these are ideas I've had all the time. I mean, I have a lot more ideas that I'm not putting out there because one, I don't want to be made a fool of. Uh, and two, I just don't have people going to react to them, you know, to sure. because they're, they're, they're Pretty, pretty futuristic ideas, you know. That they're, they're way, they're way, they're way beyond Elon Musk's trip to Mars. You know, let's say that. And yes. So, you know, when you go into those areas, you, you know, you want to, you want to be taken seriously, and you want to be taken as a businessman as well. Mm. So, you know, you, you're. Uh, I just, yeah, I just woke up one morning, and um, from a dream and a vision, uh, it just came to me: be yourself, and mm. so I was. <laughs> I love the simplicity of that. Um, it's, really, it's really that simple. It, I mean, it, I think people hold themselves back by uh, trying to conform to a, uh, an assimilated model, I'd call it, mm. um, and by not being themselves, uh, by not letting them. It, it's, it's okay if people laugh at you because you know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, be yourself and let, let, let people see you for who you are. And I, I really believe by doing that, people will congregate to you. That's great advice, John. I'm interested in your advice for other entrepreneurs, particularly young leaders who might be on the edge of their seat listening to you talk about your journey and going, wow, I can't believe he did that. Maybe my ideas are worth something. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs about stepping yep. out and, and, and being successful from your experience? First of all, put yourself out there. Put, don't be afraid of putting yourself out there. Don't be afraid of backing up your thoughts and what you think, because at, at the end of the day, no one has a right to say you're right or wrong. No, because no one even knows. So you've got to find out. And the chances are, a couple of times you might fail, but the important point is you keep going with your thoughts and your ideas, and you just be yourself and be real. Don't try and play to the industry. Play to yourself. Uh, that is probably the most important thing, I think, is play to yourself, because... The message you're getting from whatever you believe in um, is the right message. And, and when you start altering that message, is, that's when you have a bit of failure. So my, my, my advice is, you know, I don't know if you believe in a high being or whatever you want to want to call it, but whatever messages you get, uh, go with them. Go with the original thought. The first thought that comes in your head is usually the right thought, believe it or not. And um, uh, it's not the second or the third because they're, 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 that's when you start doubting your thinking on the second or the third, you know, you're thinking, Oh, am I right here or whatever? No, you're right in the first place. Yes. So, so put yourself out there and, uh, and just see what happens. And, and that's my best advice for anybody and in any business at all. 
Yeah, that's great advice, John. Uh, well, what I want to do is just go through what I call Leadership Express. I just want to ask you 10 questions and yep. get your answers. And, and hopefully uh, there's always uh, some gold in in just asking a bunch of these questions I've found. So I'll yep. just list them off really quickly. And, and whatever comes to mind off the top of your head would be great. Okay, you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. the first one. Uh, what book have you gifted a lot to other people? Okay, sure. Well, here we're going to go right from space again into a, <laughs> uh, a guy called David Pilatus, yep. who does, uh, who does uh, reports on missing people who disappear in National State Forests. And okay. it's a book called Missing, missing 411, The Hunted. Uh, it's, it's quite an incredible book. Uh, and the correlations of missing people and the patterns of missing people uh, can't be denied. There's something going on there. And uh, he's, got, he's got a YouTube podcast as well. Um, he's also got a, funny, funny enough, he's got a Wikipedia page yep. that's got false information about him on that. And he's tried to have it changed. And uh, the Wiked, several times the Wiked, Wikipedia editor, the main chief editor has come back to him and said, look, we actually not allowed to change this. So, so <laughs> that even intrigued, even intrigued me more. So, yeah, David Pilatus, Missing 411, Unexplained. Uh, great book. Okay, yeah, love it. Uh, um, uh, question two, a good book that you've read recently? Uh, well, I read, mag I, I read magazines. Uh, American Scientific is probably really what I, I, I read. I, I'm not a really big book reader. No, um, that's great. American Scientific I, magazine is... Um, so that's, yeah, a, that's um, a good one that you like to stay... Uh, you know, yeah, keep Harvard, in front of me. Harvard usually put out some good articles, but sometimes you know you've really got to source articles because uh, I like cutting edge technology, and yes. it's not really it's not freely available. You know, it's not you've got to really search the internet for it. You and and drag drag through rubbish and and you know <laughs> misinformation and all this sort of stuff to find out what's going on. I'm reading about synthetic biology at the moment, and uh, cool. uh, I'm finding that fascinating. You know. Yeah, love that. Okay, question three. Any great podcast you listen to, or like you mentioned, American Scientific? Any other sources that you that you like to read, watch, or listen to at the moment? The Jai White podcast, of course. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, John. You're very kind. Uh, question four. What's a time management or productivity tip that you you know that you use in your life? Well, <laughs> I'm probably not a good example for this because. Uh, my life is all over the all over the clock. Um, uh, it, it really is. I sleep when I'm tired. I work when I'm awake, uh, and mostly I'm tired. Uh, and that's because of the the energy I put into the work I do. Yeah, uh, very intense. It's very draining. Um, you know, I'm sleeping like twelve hours a day sometimes. You know, and. and um, and most, and the problem is most of my work is at night because of U.S. times. Of course, yeah. And 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 that stuffs your body clock up again. So yeah. uh, and you can't really manage that because you because that's what it is. That's that's just how it is. So uh, shall I say the words toughen up? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I like that. Especially working with the U.S., that's a unique um, challenge. Okay, question yeah. five. A tool that you use, like an app or a resource that comes in that comes in hand. Leadership it could be something personal. Yeah, an app that I use most of all is Teams. And not Teams is uh, Telegram. Yeah. Oh, Telegram. So, yep. Yeah, uh, we we use mostly that uh, because of encryption, uh, because of private chats. Uh, you know, the, the chances are someone is watching you, especially mm -hmm. in this sort of in this sort of industry. You know, it's it's raucous. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> could be, privacy could be, is important. You could be doing anything with rockets, right? So, yeah. uh, chance uh, you've probably got someone listening in, and I always approach business like that in anything. Yeah, uh, there is probably a third party listening into what you're saying. Uh, once you put your head up, you put your head up, and people notice you. you you're noticed. Yeah. Okay. Telegram. That's a good one. Uh, what do you see as a big struggle or problem that leaders are facing today? Uh. COVID, um, I think COVID is a big challenge. Uh, yeah. 
and uh, you know, I don't want to get I don't want to get conspiracy theory here on you, but you know, it's hard to get away from agenda with COVID. Really, you know, it's uh, now we've got a variant. I mean, you know, and they're coming up with vaccines within four months to take nine years to develop. Something mm. strange. Here. Something strange. Uh, and and I've noticed I've done I've done a bit of research on COVID. Uh, there's been so many suicides, uh, people with mental depression. Yeah. Uh, and that's increased since in that period dramatically. So I think, and, and you know, small businesses going out of business, yeah. I think that's a real problem. And for any worker, for any employer, uh, for any employer, um, you know, dealing with that situation mm. and, and, and negotiating through that. Yeah. That's a great answer. Uh, what about uh, the biggest struggle with holding people accountable as a leader? I have a problem with that bit of softy. <laughs> uh, look, it is what it is. If if you stuff up, you stuff up. You fix mm. it up. Uh, it's my attitude. Yes. Um, uh, and if you can't fix it up, we may have a problem. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I let people have their space to rectify any problems or situations that occur, uh, but. At the end of the day, I have to take responsibility, and you know that may may come down to say bye bye. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So uh, just, yep. Question eight: A movie or TV show that really impacted you? Star Wars. Star Wars. Yes, that's so good, especially in light of uh, of what you're doing. Oh, that's so good. In uh, question seventy seven. The Star Wars in nine seventy seven. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome, John. Question nine, a quote you're particularly fond of for life or leadership? Oh, gee. I don't think I have one to tell you the truth. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just I, I reckon uh, toughen up John Moody talking toughen about up. time that, management. Yeah. Toughen, Tough, up. Toughen, <laughs> toughen up John Moody 2021. No, exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. right. We, um, I, really I am like just that. putting these off the top of your head. So, um that's right. If you come up with one, uh, if you remember one that's uh, that's a good one, then then flick Actually, it through. I the really weekend. like that. Yeah, toughen up. I, I, I could go with that definitely. Yeah, I like that one, John. Um, okay, and the last one. What do you love most about leading in your role and and in your industry? Inspiring people. I really, uh, you know, I have these ideas and they're way out of ideas. And you first put them people and they go, "Whoa, where are you coming from?" <laughs> and then they get it and they click and and and. You realise you just reached a mind, and uh, you can lighten that mind to a to a yeah. new type of intelligence or a new type of world or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I love that. I love switching on people um, to new things, to to new concepts and new ideas. Uh, that's my most rewarding. Yeah, that's uh, a wonderful answer. Um, well, uh, th- thank you, John. Thank you to all of our listeners tuning in. I think yes. that's been. Um, I just want to I just want to remind our listeners that uh, John mentioned it earlier. We do also have the John O'White Leadership Podcast and also uh, the Leadership Question of the Day. You can check that out. But just to to finish today, uh, I want to say a big thank you in the in the midst of uh, like you mentioned, working with the America Board of Directors and and crazy time zones fitting fitting me in. It's been a wonderful chat. I know a lot of people are going to be looking up a bunch of things you've mentioned and also looking up what you do, John. So um, right. thank Excellent. you so much for coming on, John. Also, if there's any questions, you can always contact me through LinkedIn. If anyone, if any of your listeners want to ask me anything, feel free to sure. just drop me an email. I read and answer everything and I reply to everybody. Uh, all 2000 happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday emails. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, 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 as I said, I read everything and I, I looked at everyone and I replied to everybody. Yeah, wonderful. So you can contact John. Best ways on LinkedIn, you mentioned, John. Yes, definitely. Okay, John Moody on LinkedIn. And uh, feel free, everyone, to get in touch. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast as much as I did. If you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there, including our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from all over the world in all different roles, in different industries, answer these seven questions on leadership 
leadership and leaders give these in-depth answers around how they spend their time, uh, a book that's been significant for them. It's just a gold mine. It's completely free to access. So go to consultclarity.org and look for that. We'd also love to interview you about your leadership. I believe your experience, your life, your context means that you have advice on leadership that other leaders can learn from. Yes, you, if you're going, not me. Well, no, I really believe you would have something to add. So if you're looking for a way to give back, it's completely free to get involved. And we would love to interview you through the seven questions on leadership. You just go to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest or Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form and get involved. We have a free resource on our website called the Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook, 10 world-class leaders giving their thoughts on leadership and that's completely free. It's available on our homepage consultclarity.org right at the top. So make sure you go and get that and download it today. And we have a free daily email that you can subscribe to. We send this out to over 15,000 leaders from around the world. And uh, it contains the highlights of content from our podcasts, our blogs, um, our books, books we're reading. It's got the best content and it gives you exclusive, limited, early access to our masterclasses, workshops, new products, special offers. It's all for our subscribers. You can go to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe and join 15,000 other leaders. And you know, my gift to you is to work really hard, particularly through the Leadership Conversations podcast. I have been blown away by the quality of the leaders and I'm learning as much as anyone in doing these interviews. So I'm having a great time. And my gift to you is to keep lining up the best leaders I can to invest in your leadership. Your gift to me, if you're finding this helpful, there is something that you could do that would help us out massively. And that is to write a review and to leave a rating for our podcast or wherever you're watching or listening to this. I can't tell you how much that helps us out. Also subscribe or follow. It really does make a difference in helping us to help more leaders become everything they're meant to be. Another thing that means a lot to me personally is when I see our community share our content. So if you do share this or any other piece of content on social media, then thank you and and please do that. And look for me, John O'White or Clarity and tag us in your post. Our team is always looking for posts to engage with from our community. And there's also a chance that we'll share your content uh, to go beyond and share it with our followers. Last of all, you can check out my book. It's called Step Up or Step Out, How to Deal with Difficult People Even If You Hate Conflict. I wrote this book because 50% of the coaching sessions I have with leaders, this topic comes up again and again and again. And it's this idea of how do I have this difficult conversation? How do I lead this person better when I'm finding them difficult? Or in some cases you look and you say, I think I might be leading a difficult person. They're just quite difficult to lead or I'm finding them quite difficult to lead. So there's a three-step process that I unpack in step up or step out. And the amazing thing, and I've literally done this myself and I've heard it anecdotally from other leaders as I've coached them, is that if you follow this process, you will see that person step up and change their behavior or make a decision, which is to step out some of the time. Uh, 95% of the time, people will step up or step out in just four weeks. And I stand by that. It's uh, You have to read the book to understand, but uh, I really do believe in it and I've experienced it firsthand. It works. So you can go to Amazon, look up Step Up or Step Out John O'White or store.consultclarity.org forward slash book. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to be back with a new episode next time of the Leadership Conversations podcast. And I hope today has helped you to take another step towards becoming the leader you're meant to be. See you next time.